In my previous videos, I showed you several note-taking options, which I don't use. Many students do, and that's great. Pick what works for you. But in this video, I'm going to show you what I currently use. I switched to this system about a year ago. It was a great deal of work getting migrated, but now that I'm here, I love it. It is a huge part of my life and my workflow. I'm in it all the time. Um, and I imagine I'll stick with this for a while, but we'll see. So there's a couple things here that are important. First of all, I like to work in plain text. I mentioned in several of my earlier videos that you're locked into proprietary data formats when you use certain tools like Evernote or Scrivener. Um, I like control of my own data and particularly as someone who does software development, plain text is the most powerful data format there is because you can always access it, you can manipulate it, you can open it with different kinds of files, it's very flexible, you can do a ton. The reason a lot of people don't use plain text is because it doesn't have all the pretty formatting that you can apply in something like Microsoft Word. Well, there are solutions for that. One example is something called Markdown, which is a way of writing a plain text document but telling it what kind of format you want. So here's an example uh, on this website has everything you need to know about Markdown. Uh, if I'm writing, I can put a couple hash marks in front of a line. And when the markdown is compiled, it essentially becomes an HTML document like a web page. Those dashes mean use a size two heading. I can put one hash and get a larger heading. I can put three dashes, three hashes and get uh, a size three smaller heading. I can create hyperlinks by putting text in square brackets and curly brackets. I can do bold by putting an asterisk, double asterisk around text, um, and so forth. There's a whole bunch of these things. We can go to the cheat sheet here. We can see how to make lists, how to create block quotes. This might seem a little strange at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually really easy. So we have a couple ingredients here. Plain text combined with markdown gives us a way to write very flexible open data formats. Now the next thing is putting all of our notes together in a system. And the discovery I made that led me to switch was something called the Zettelkasten method, which you can find a whole website about this, zettelkasten.de. And this name comes from a scholar, Nicholas Luhmann, who I'll read here, was a highly productive social scientist. He published 50 books and over 600 articles. He didn't achieve this on his own. He had quite a companion, and that companion was his knowledge management system. He developed a very powerful and robust system of putting his notes on note cards that were numbered and stored and linked in a cabinet system so he could always follow the links to other notes. Essentially, he pioneered the World Wide Web using note cards. And numerous people who are into productivity and note-taking have run with his ideas to build very, very powerful knowledge management systems and to develop tools to do this. You'll find a number of different software alternatives that do Zettelkastens. The one I chose to use after discovering it is called Obsidian, a second brain, which is exactly what I was looking for. You write your notes in Markdown and then they get compiled into HTML and hey, it looks like we're in Wikipedia. You're essentially building your own personal wiki, making connections between notes, and you can even get nifty views like a graph view here. So you can download Obsidian for free. The way the pricing works is uh, you get it for free. If you become a regular user, they ask for a $30 purchase, which gets you access to updates. And then for commercial purposes, they have a subscription model. Um, but you can play around for free. I'm going to show you a, a brand new example of an Obsidian file uh, called a vault, and then I'll show you my actual Obsidian vault. So I've created a new vault called SAS example, and in many ways this looks like Zotero or Scrivener. I've got what's essentially a folder here, my vault, and I can create notes and folders in it. And how you use folders is up to you. You also can tag things. So between having different folders, different notes, tags, hyperlinking, you've got a lot of ways you can potentially organize information and you can do what works for you. We will use the same example from the Scrivener 
example, we'll put in some notes from 660. Beinhocker, the origin of wealth. I'm going to tag this SAS 660. Boom. Now here I've got a list of every tag. I have one note from SAS 660 by Beinhocker, and I will write my notes here. Now we can apply our markdown formatting. I will put an overview, key ideas, links to other SAS readings, and I can also put some uh, double hashes to make smaller titles. The economy is a complex system, physical versus technological. Or let's see, what is it? Physical versus social technology is how he breaks it down. There are two kinds of technologies. Now, if I go Command E, this is immediately compiled and rendered like a website. Okay, I could put a list in here. All kinds of things I can do. I've got my tag here, which will take me to a list of everything with this tag. I can add another note for Brian Arthur. I will add the SAS 660 tag. I can also do things like create, I won't show this right now, but I could create templates. So let's say I wanted a template for every single book. I could create a template that has all these sections and with one click, I could load that template up for my book. Now, let's say that I wanna include that reference to Arthur. Arthur writes about similar stuff as Beinhocker. By putting it in double brackets, it opens up a hyperlink thing. And I can immediately access my hyperlinks to my other books. I can click Command. I can preview it there, which is kind of nifty. I can also Command click, and now I'm there. I also can look at backlinks. I can say, hey, wait, as I'm reading Beinhocker, something in my notes references this note. I reference it in Brian Arthur, and here's a little preview. So now I can click back. Perfect. Um, I can also open the graph view and see, okay, I've got two notes here, Arthur and Beinhocker. I can filter by tags, I can do all kinds of things. Now, one of the cool things about the Zettelkasten method, I, I emphasized in my earlier videos that tools like Scrivener and, Zo and uh, Evernote only let you link to a note in its entirety, but let's say that I only wanna link to part of it. Let's say I have a great quote here about complexity that I want to reference in Arthur. Now, when I come back here, I can go Beinhocker has a great quote on this, and I do an exclamation point, the same things, the same square brackets, Beinhocker, only now I put this hash mark, and it brings up a list of all the section titles, heading one, heading two, here's my quote, the economy is a complex system. Now when I compile, Command E, Boom, I've just embedded this portion of that note into my note here. All right, well, how do I wanna use that? Well, let's say you've got 20 books in here and you've got some other note you wanna write about, linking ideas across notes. And you say, um, I wanna write a course paper on complexity theory. And you could say, uh, I need to use Beinhocker's definition I'll put that back in there. I also want to quote Arthur on history of complexity, and I'll quote something from Arthur. Uh, I haven't written section titles yet. But now what you can do is you've got yourself a tool not just to um, include notes about your course and the books that you're reading, but you have a playground in which you can link together interesting ideas in entirely new notes. Um, you could outline an entire course paper this way. And you know this type of embedding brings a certain level of complexity, no pun intended, uh, but it works for some people, maybe not for others. But if nothing else, you can at least list the resources that you want here. And oh, by the way, now when you go back to your graph view, hey, I'm building out a grid here, everything's quoting each other. 
But a year from now, when I've forgotten what the main ideas were and the main authors in complexity theory, I can take a look at this graph and start walking around and exploring, well, who said that and who did what? Um, I've got, I can go to my tag pane. I've got SAS 660 here. I can click on that and see the list of authors. Something else you may want to do is create another note that's sort of synthesizing your ideas. This is a key part of the Zettelkasten method is that you spend a certain amount of time not just taking notes, but reviewing your notes and creating, let's call them meta notes that link ideas together. So, you know, we could be later on in the course, we could say, we're doing international relations. I could do key ideas in IR. And let's see, let me brainstorm. What are those? Balance of power. We're going to have three big isms. Realism. Liberalism. If I can spell right. Liberalism. And so forth. And these notes haven't even been created yet. But if I click on it, I've just created a new note called balance of power. And I could start citing IR authors here, but now I can go back to my key ideas and IR note anytime I want and start outlining my ideas. And you can imagine how this would scale over time that you have a very networked and fluid way of managing your notes um, that has tremendous power in it. You can make this whatever you want and you can outline all your ideas and, and so forth in it. That's probably enough for now to show you the basics. To show you the real power here, let's switch over to my own Obsidian.